Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Immaculate Heart of Mary. And thank you for joining us from your home or from wherever you are this evening for the celebration of Holy Thursday, the evening mass of the Lord's Supper. My God would welcome me into this mystery. Say, take this bread, take this wine, now the simple may divine for any to receive. By your mercy we come to your table. By your In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and may the Lord be with you. Well, good evening, everyone. It's good to be with you uh, on, this, on this wonderful night of the celebration of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, and the First Mass, and the relationship that the Son, Jesus, had with his Father, that gift of that love, that relationship that would sustain Jesus through the cross of Good Friday, that would lead to resurrection, to new life. That's the same gift of love that he shares with us. That gift of love, as it's what the Lord can say, love, live on in my love. Love one another as I have loved you. That gift of that relationship that help us through the most difficult, dark times, the troubles that we experience in our lives that our world is encountering at this moment. Because we have a God who does not practice social distancing. We have a God who draws ever close to us, to be with us, to journey and accompany us. 
And as we gather in his presence around this, the table of the Lord, we now ask the Lord's strength and forgiveness. And I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, 
in which your only begotten Son went about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may be drawn, may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good deeds he has done for me? The cup of salvation will take up I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant. The son of your handmaid, you have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving. 
I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pray in the presence of all His people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, After supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper... Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all for he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord 
Just a couple announcements. Um, immediately following our Mass this evening, we're going to be having online adoration uh, until 10 p.m. So you can keep stay online after the Mass until 10 p.m. and we'll be having that opportunity to gather with the Lord in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane as, uh, uh, as our Lord, can you not stay one hour with me? So an opportunity to be present uh, in that way. And once again, a reminder, we'll have our Good Friday service at the same time, 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. And then on uh, Saturday, the Easter vigil will begin at 7.30 p.m. Um, and then Easter Sunday, we'll have Mass at 9.30 a.m. So all of these services will be uh, online for you to uh, participate in. So we're together. We're together in aloneness. We're together in our separateness. And that makes us one in a very unique way with each other and with the entire human family. We are gathered in compassion, in suffering and struggling with one another. It reveals a oneness and a bond that we share that is much greater than our aloneness and our separateness. Tonight we gather alone in our homes, like Jesus and the apostles gathered alone in the upper room, surrounded by a dark and hostile environment, fearful of going out. In past years, many of us have been used to entering into Holy Week through ritual in our church. This year, we are entering into Holy Week through reality in our lives. In some years, in order to enter into these days of Holy Thursday and Good Friday, we've had to imagine what it would have been like to experience feeling isolation, fear, abandonment, uncertainty, anxiety, restlessness. This year, we don't have to imagine it so much. We and others are experiencing it and living it. So this year, we are perhaps in a position to be more open to drawing from the experience of Jesus and his disciples. When we're in church, we know we can receive the Eucharist to be in communion with God. But how do we find that God to be in communion with right where we are now? as the disciples, how to find God, how to find life, how to find hope, how to find meaning, especially in dark moments. In the midst of that upper room where the apostles gathered for the Last Supper, it was not a religious building. It was not a temple or a synagogue or a church, just like you who are gathering tonight in your homes. But Christ was there in that upper room, just as he is with you in your family room or your living room. He was there as a real presence, a real light, a real love, pure, deep, and true, for them to trust in and to surrender to. As Jesus would say to them, live on in my love, love one another as I have loved you. Very often we believe in a God who is out there somewhere, in heaven or in a church building or in a tabernacle, but to find him right where we are in the seemingly ordinary places we live or with the seemingly ordinary people we are gathering with amidst feelings of uncertainty and fear, as they did in that ordinary building on that first, on that Holy Thursday, at that first Mass, as well as on the cross of Good Friday, trying to discover God in the midst of the darkest times, in the situations of, that we most fear and try to avoid. That was the challenge of those first disciples, as it is in a certain way for us today. In the Gospel of John, we just read the story of the Last Supper. But there's no mention of Jesus taking bread and wine and turning them into his body and blood. We read that in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, as well as in Paul's letter to the, the first letter to the Corinthians. Why would that be left out? Especially when earlier in the Gospel of John, in chapter 6, there was so much emphasis on Jesus giving his, us his body and blood to eat and to drink. Obviously, the Gospel of John is trying to make a point. It was the latest of the Gospels to be written. And by that time, the story of the Last Supper was already well known, and it was being experienced liturgically. But it wasn't being fully understood. The reason was because people were overly focused on wanting to receive and become one with the glorified body and blood of Christ in heaven. And they were forgetting the way it was also calling them to become one 
with and in love and receptive and patient with and forgiving and caring for and serving the body of Christ and the body of human beings. There is always this human tendency to want to localize God, to confine him to a certain place. He is here, but not there. This is what the prophets warned the Israelites when they wanted to build him a temple so they could honor and worship him there, but then ignore him and not love him over there in that place or in that group or in that person. We see that, we saw that with the conquistadors, God in the tabernacle or in their people, but not in the native peoples. Or the slaveholders, God is in the Bible, but not in the people we are going to enslave. Or we believe in God in heaven, but not one who is also here on earth or in the natural world that we are going to disrespect and exploit. In fact, the whole reason we have God and his word and sacrament is to open us up to discovering more fully his presence everywhere and in everyone. That is the significance of the veil in the temple tearing from top to bottom. There is no longer a separation between the sacred and the profane, the holy of holies and everywhere else between heaven and earth. In the New Testament, there are two Greek words used to, re- used to refer to body, soma and sarx. Soma refers to a body of a person insofar as it is good and healthy and virtuous, as in the body of Jesus rising from the dead. Sarx refers to a body or flesh of a person negatively, insofar as a person gets sick, smells, sins, corrupts, decays, and dies. Amazingly and scandalously, in the Gospel of John in chapter 6, Jesus uses the term sarx, not soma, to refer to us eating his flesh. It's obvious that he is not simply referring to us receiving and becoming one with his perfect, resurrected, glorified body in heaven, or he would have used the term soma. By using the term sarx, he must be referring to more than himself. By saying we must receive as sarx, he must mean that we are also receiving, becoming one with, having compassion for, embracing, forgiving, being patient with and loving the imperfect, sick, broken, wounded, sinful, suffering body and flesh of humanity that he is intimately one with, the least of his brothers and sisters, the hungry, the thirsty, the homeless, the naked, the sick, and the imprisoned. This is the body of Jesus. This is the body that Jesus loves, serves, identifies with, ate with, gave his life for, and wants us to do the same for. This is the same reason Jesus washed feet at the Last Supper that we see in the Gospel of John chapter 13. By showing how we receive and become one with the body of Christ when we receive and lovingly touch and wash and care for the dirty, the smelly parts of humanity. Because Christ is really present there too. That is also the body of Christ we are to love and to receive. I believe that's also the real reason why many of his believers walked away at that time that we see in the gospel in John chapter 6. We cannot simply love Jesus in his glorified perfection without at the same time loving him in his imperfect and an annoying body of humanity in the world. It's a whole package that cannot be separated. That's the heart of the Christian message of incarnation, a God who is here with us. While we may not be receiving Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist during this pandemic, we can receive and love Jesus in his sarks, in the flesh of his humanity, by our love for his body and people. And one of the ways we are loving Christ in his body is by sacrificing for others, by physical social distancing, and not receiving him in the Eucharist at Mass during this time. Now today's gospel teaches us two ways for us to be in real communion with God and with each other. The first way is by taking off our outer garment and washing each other's feet. The second way is by taking off our shoe and sock and allowing our feet to be washed. The first way, it says, the first one, it says that Jesus took off his outer garment. The outer garment is something that represents our image, our persona, our outer self. It's our reputation. It's how we present ourselves to others and even to ourselves. It is our roles, our occupations, our identities, our race, our nationality, our political affiliation, our religious or and our religions, our beliefs, our judgments, our opinions, our thoughts, our ideology, the teams we root for. It's our ego, 
all those things that separate us or make us different or divide us from each other. It's also those things that we often say make me, me, and you, you. By taking off that outer garment, Jesus is showing us what we must do in order to discover the inner garment, who we truly are, our true self, underneath all of that, especially when we gather as church. And not only to see that inner garment in ourselves, but in each person, who they are underneath, the person God sees, so that we can love and serve them and wash their feet. Because that body is intimately part of Christ's body. The washing of feet and serving others is able to cross any division or separation based on having different outer garments. And yet we so much overly identify with that outer garment. It's not that the outer garment is bad. It's only bad when it becomes our primary or our only garment, our primary self or our only self. It can be part of who we are, but it's not the core or the essential part of who we are. That inner garment of who we are is beloved children of God and beloved brothers and sisters of one another. Who we are as the body of Christ. That's our true identity. Just as the body of Christ is hidden under the appearance of bread and wine, so is also often the body of Christ often hidden underneath that outer garment. Maybe our being away from the Eucharist can be a way for us to reconnect with this inner garment in ourselves and in others. This inner reality, this real presence of Christ who dwells in the hearts of each and every person. You know, at Mass, of course, the goal is not to change and transform bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. That's the means. The goal is to change and transform human beings, to transubstantiate us, so that we become and live and relate to each other as the body and blood of Christ. So that's the first way of being in communion with the body of Christ, taking off that outer garment which reveals the real presence of Christ in each person. The second way is by taking off our shoe and our sock and letting our feet be washed. This reveals our weakness, our imperfections, our fragility, our broken, wounded part of ourselves that we share with all people. That should make us more forgiving, more understanding, more patient. But most of us are like Peter. We want to hide or deny what is weak, the unpresentable parts of what's vulnerable, unlovable unlovable parts of ourselves as we see them. When Jesus wanted to wash his feet, he says, no way. He feels embarrassed, ashamed about himself, like Adam and Eve hiding in the garden. Jesus basically says to Peter, you know what, Peter? You don't have to hide the fact that you have smelly feet or that you're not perfect or brave or that you're going to deny me. In fact, it's only when you can accept that part of yourselves that you can begin to have a real close and honest relationship with Christ and with other people. It's precisely that part of us that we hide, deny, disguise, pretend that we need to bring out into the open so our shame can be taken away, we can be healed, and we can live more honestly and openly. Unlike the Pharisees, Jesus is very patient with human weakness. He doesn't shame or embarrass or humiliate. It's only when we hide or deny or disguise or project onto others and then hate it in another person where it becomes a problem. It's not weakness that's the obstacle, it's the ego. Weakness is actually an ally, the primary way that the ego self can be displaced and give way to our true self. So we can say with St. Paul, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Before Peter denied Jesus, he had denied himself first. I don't have smelly feet. I will never deny you. Peter, it's okay to admit you are weak, that you're not perfect, and that you are in need of God's love that you're in need of God's grace, that you're in need of God's mercy. That's what we're all called to come to that place, to be real, to be honest, to be transparent, to be open to God, to be open to one another. That's how when one is weak, one will find real strength. As St. Paul would say, it's when I'm weak, then I am strong in Christ. And then I can find a real relationship with Christ and with others. It's only when we can acknowledge and be patient with and accept that part of ourselves that we can begin to do the same for one another. That is why after the resurrection, Jesus will say to Peter three times, do you love me, do you love me, do you love me? Followed by, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Out of your experience of failure and weakness, Peter, not by denying or hiding or projecting it, 
you'll be able to love and care more fully for others in their struggles. And by recognizing the inner garment of who you are as a child of God, you'll be able to love the Christ and others in their inner garment as well. And so not only believing in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, but by allowing that real presence of Christ to live through us, to be, allow the Christ to be present in his love and his compassion, to be channels of that, by becoming really present to God as he is in everything and everyone. In that way, we become what we receive. When we become the sacrament for all to experience and encounter the all-loving, all-compassionate, all-merciful Christ in this world, a living embodiment of Eucharistic presence. And that moves us from the ritual of Holy Thursday to the reality of Good Friday, of a love poured out sacrificially for the body of Christ. And it is when we do that, that Easter and resurrection become a reality once again in our lives and in the life of our world. And so as we had this wonderful teaching and example of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. And he said, wash one another's feet. And while we're uh, not able to do that here in our church, uh, I invite you at this time to do that for one another at your home. So if this, as Jesus said, um, and I think it's a wonderful opportunity to experience this. And so I invite you all to get a glass of water uh, in your homes. Each person take, get a glass of water and, and take off, a, each person also take off a shoe and a sock. And then just, and you can get a towel as well. And then just simply just pour a little water on each other's feet and dry them and have each one do that for one another. And we're going to pause at this time to enable you to experience that gift, recognizing that common need we all have. I'll need to have our feet washed, to experience compassion, to experience mercy, to experience forgiveness. That's something we all need. And we need to be open about that need that we have. And then the gift that we all have to be present, to not humiliate, to not to shame, but to embrace with love and compassion each of our brothers and sisters. Because we see beneath the outer garment, but we see to each person that, that each one is a beloved child of God, worthy of dignity, worthy of respect. To, to love that body of Christ and the people that you are with at this time. And if you're by yourself, uh, you can wash your own foot. You know that you are also a child of God and you can, you're, we're also called to love and respect, respect who we are as children, beloved children of God and to show the same love that God has for us, uh, for ourselves as well. So we're going to pause at this time to give you the time uh, to do that. You know, I, I know some of you might be reluctant. You could be like Peter in the, in the gospel today, but finally Jesus even convinced Peter. So allow the Lord to convince you to practice this little ritual with the people that you are with at this time. Uh, and we'll have a, a little song of reflection as, uh, as, we have, as we do that at this time.
presence I am not afraid of brokenness to wash your feet with humble tears I would be poured out to nothing's left and I just want to wait on you my I just want to dwell on who you are. Beautiful, beautiful, oh, I'm a lost more to say. Jesus has given us an example of how to love and care his, for his body and the world and the people that he loves and cares for. In remembrance, we gather in humility, we look to God in confidence, we now pray for the church and for the world in which we live. That all who are called to ministry be faithful witnesses to the example of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer that all who serve in the judicial system carefully temper justice with mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who will be received into the body of Christ find warm welcome and wise guidance in this community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That all who struggle with mental, physical, and emotional illness find strength and courage for the trials of daily life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who gather around the table of the Lord find renewed inspiration in serving one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our deceased loved ones in a special way for Julie Legassi and for Phyllis Stewart that they share God's eternal life and his resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God of mercy, you give us your son as our, gave us our, your son for our Paschal lamb. You give us the example of his life, how to love and serve and care for one another. We, may we continue to love and serve your people, your body of Christ in the midst of our world. We ask this and we make these prayers and these commitments now of our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all is holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we're made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy, this, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day in which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for or by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of this blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, to command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now at home, why don't you share with one another a sign of that peace? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter into my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
not hunger and to believe in me shall not Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a reminder at the conclusion of our uh, Mass here today, we will have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, which will um, take place until 10 p.m. tonight. You can stay on, online during that time and participate in that. And that's, again, a reminder. We'll be back again tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. for our Good Friday service. Then Saturday evening at 7.30 p.m.
for the Easter Vigil Mass, and then, of course, Easter Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. The Lord be with you. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. 